It's the week 16 matchup preview right here on DraftKings TV. I'm your host, Dan Strafford, in for David Kitchen this week. We also have on the line Andrew Wiggins. Find him on Twitter at Andrew, Andrew Wiggins, of course. And he is now co hosting the Daily Fantasy Basketball Edge podcast coming to you on iTunes. And you can find it on the DK Playbook. And you can also uh, find him throughout DraftKings TV. And we also have Jeff Ulrich at the Fantasy Grind on Twitter, and you find all of his videos and write-ups throughout the DK Playbook and DK TV as well. Gentlemen, welcome to Week 16. Welcome to Christmas Week as we get ready for the NFL. Yeah, thanks, Dan. We're uh, we're getting to the end here, but uh, we still got two weeks of the regular season to close it out in style, and I plan on doing just that. Yeah. Closing out in style, that sounds good. I hope I can do that. I probably won't, but we'll see. We're going to try. Let's not limp towards the finish line here. Let's finish strong as uh, we go with San Diego at Oakland at the top here. Uh, We saw Phillip Rivers uh, send off what may have been, depending on who you talk to, the last game in San Diego for the Chargers, the whole stadium issue at large still out there. But uh, this matchup seems pretty juicy from a fantasy perspective, Jeff, where uh, we have some offensive weapons from uh, Oakland, we have Philip Rivers, who is always a possibility to explode for big numbers, even without real receiving targets on his side. I guess uh, Danny Woodhead can have uh, 40 receptions and 10 touchdowns this week. Uh, but what do you see from this matchup? And, and are you keying in on this one as part of your research heading into the weekend? Yeah, Philip Rivers is, uh, I mean, you hit it on the head. He's he's had some big games, but in his last five games, he's been, he, is, he has been a little bit hit or miss. So um, he's been under 10 fantasy points in three of his last five games. But then he's really, he's really sort of exploded against those weaker defenses all year. The issue I have with Rivers this week is that the Raiders' pass uh, rush is really good right now. Uh, and Khalil Mack is playing at an unreal level. So I'm a little bit scared that um, the Chargers are going to have a little bit of a letdown in this game. But the Raiders' pass rush is going to cause big problems for the Chargers' pass game. So... I'm not necessarily keying on Philip Rivers in this game personally. I do like Dontrell Inman at 3000 I think he's getting a ton of snaps right now. And just as a mid-price play, he makes some sense to me. He was actually in the winning lineup for the Millionaire Maker last week. Uh, and then obviously Danny Woodhead is the other real value play. He's still only 4400 Melvin Gordon's on IR now. Uh, his snaps can only go up. And like you mentioned, he could catch 8 to 10 passes in this game just out of necessity. So... Those are kind of two of the plays I'm keying on personally from uh, San Diego. You're not on Donald Brown, the reincarnation of uh, Donald Brown out there. Uh, Damn it, Donald. Damn it, Donald. We will uh, move on to the Oakland side of the ball, Andrew. And uh, is it a Latavius Murray week if you're playing Thursday night games? I think that Latavius Murray is a great play. He's he's just underpriced for the workload that he's getting, and it's a great matchup. There's it's a really high team total for Oakland. They're sitting at 26. Uh, that's that's one of the things we want to check off he's at home there's box number two and San Diego is really weak against the run so there's box three Uh, and and then when you look at his price down at 5k I think he's got to be one of the top plays of the week uh, for someone that's getting nearly all the touches and and really I like Derek Carr Um, Mari Cooper to me is probably a guy I'll stay away from I think he'll get shadowed by Jason Brett who's been very very good this year Uh, but that should open up some production for for Michael Crabtree so I, I like them they're more tournament plays a crab tree, and you could look at Cooper because uh, he's he could get open anytime for a long touchdown. Uh, but I'd probably be focusing on Carr and Latavius as, as two core plays for me this week. Andrew, sticking with you and moving on to Washington at Philadelphia. Um, some have said we've started to see the real Sam Bradford the past couple of weeks in this Chip Kelly offense. Uh, we've seen the the carousel running back for Philadelphia. And then for Washington, it's been the, the Jordan Reed show. And, and Kirk Cousins has turned into, over the past couple of weeks, a, a good QB. It's been I read a story that uh, his head coach sat him down and made him watch Tom Brady f- uh, film. And all of a sudden, he knew how to quarterback. And if it's that easy, I'll sit down and watch Tom Brady film. As a Jets fan, that's fine. But um, interesting to see how that worked out. But this Washington-Philadelphia game seems to have some offensive implications. Uh, do you like uh, Washington at all, and would you go back to the well with Jordan Reed? Well, I think you got to be looking at Jordan Reed every single week. The targets are there. The production has certainly been there. The price is getting to the point where uh, I'm a little bit apprehensive just because he's up to 6.5K, which – I mean, that, that's the highest tight end on the slate this week. So he might be a little bit more of a tournament play just based on his price. But from a production standpoint, I like him a lot this week. And there's no reason to think that he won't continue doing what he's done, which has been very good. 
Uh, he's probably the only guy I'm really looking at. I mean, you could you could look at Cousins in a tournament, but uh, he's the type of guy that usually with these weaker quarterbacks, I, I try and take him at home if I can. He's on the road. The team total, eh, you know, it's 22. Uh, so I'm not getting overly excited about him, but I do like stacking him with Reed in that tournament. Uh, you don't think there will be four Deshaun Jackson touchdowns, the revenge game here for, for D-Jacks, which I know he already has a few times, but it seems like everyone's picking on Chip Kelly. You might as well go to that well again. Uh, Jeff, we, we move on to the other side of the ball with uh, Philadelphia. Is this the real Jordan Matthews? Has he passed the, the issues he's had earlier in the year? Can we trust him as a big play threat for the Eagles at 4,400 on DraftKings? Yeah, I'm a little disappointed this game isn't on like the main slate because I, I sort of wanted to target it more this week. Uh, Jordan Matthews is only 4,400 now. So you are getting a very talented wide receiver at a very cheap price. And uh, I would be sort of recommending him this week, especially if he was on the main slate. I'd definitely be targeting him for tournaments. Uh, he's got three touchdowns now in his last four games. And I think the biggest thing is Sam Bradford's playing better. So uh, he's a big, talented wide receiver, plays a slot a lot. Great for yards after the catch. I definitely like him in this game, too, against the Redskins, whose secondary really isn't very good. Uh, they, they give up a lot of points to the wide receiver position. The cornerbacks aren't great. I also like Zach Ertz in this game. He's really been coming on. Those are the two main pass-catching targets from Philly. Uh, they've both been playing well lately. So uh, I do like both of these games, or both those players. I do like this game in particularly. I wouldn't touch the Eagles' run game at all, but uh, I definitely like those two pass targets for, uh, for play this week. I don't know why you want a more trustworthy search uh, situation there in Philadelphia. I mean, who, who knows what's going to I mean, happen? You only have five field. backs to choose from, right? So right. what could go wrong? Yeah, it's just a little roulette. Never heard anybody <laughs> uh, running back roulette. I guess we can coin that phrase here. Uh, moving on, Andrew, to Carolina, Atlanta. Is there anything that Cam Newton can't do? Uh, we, we've questioned him earlier this season. Um, a lot of analysts did saying he wasn't a top flight QB, that he was you know, doing things because of his feet. Well, yeah, he does things because of his feet and his arm has been electric the past couple of weeks, uh, front runner for the MVP right now and keeping uh, the Carolina Panthers moving forward towards the playoffs. Yeah, I, I've tended to shy away from him on DraftKings because I feel like he's not a guy that's all that likely to get the bonus. And uh, that's been a little silly. You, on you, my mean, part. you mean the rushing bonus, right? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that's what I was getting to. I mean, he, he got both of the bonuses last week, I believe which uh, he did that once last year too. And that, that's pretty, uh, maybe he came up just short. I know Russ did it last year, but man, that, that's pretty hard to do. Uh, he's been incredible. His price is up there. I mean, he's the most expensive quarterback. I think he's more than, he's the same as Tom Brady, but he's been so good. I don't anticipate that slowing down this week. Uh, they're on the road, so it, it should be a semi-competitive game. It's a seven point spread. And if that's the case, uh, he'll be throwing and, and doing everything that he does. And, and with the running back situation, I think Stewart's probably going to miss again. Um, maybe that's a few more carries for him. Uh, maybe some more looks in the red zone for him, which he already gets a lot. Uh, I, I love Cam Newton. I, I think you can absolutely consider paying up for him this week. Are there any other pieces here? Is Olsen in play at, at 7K on DraftKings? I think he's just too expensive, really. Uh, he, he's fine in a tournament. And, and one of the other strange things throughout this run, uh, and I think it's probably mostly price-related, that Cam and Olsen haven't really been that owned in tournaments. Uh, it seems like you can get them under 10% week in and week out. And with the upside that they possess, that's pretty awesome. So definitely look at those guys in tournaments. I'm probably passing on Olsen in cash games. Jeff, how about the Falcons in this uh, situation? We saw the Carolina defense give up a bunch of points uh, to the Giants last week. Odell Beckham Jr., for whatever antics happened post-whistle, uh, had a, a decent game, if not a big game. Do you go to Julio Jones again? Do you think Matt Ryan has learned his lesson and gone back to his star wide receiver? I might have learned his lesson, but I mean, I, I think that the, the Carolina defense is going to – it's not a good spot. I, I know that there was a, a lot of points put up against him last week, but that was, you know, that was sort of a weird set of circumstances. The Giants got a blocked field goal. They got a couple fumbles near the goal line. I don't think that's going to happen again, and uh, I really don't like – any of the Atlanta players this week, to be honest. I definitely don't like Devonta Freeman. Uh, they really haven't been running the ball lately. Freeman gets a lot of PPR points, but with the way the uh, the Panthers' defense plays, I don't see him having a big game. Julio Jones, you know, I, maybe he puts up 20 points, but I just don't think that's enough at his price point. And against Josh Norman, it's not a good matchup. I'm pretty much off all the, the Falcons' targets. Um, I might even consider 
uh, the Panthers D this week, although it's pretty pricey. So I definitely like Cam Newton. Uh, you might even think about Cameron Artis Payne, who's probably going to get some more carries this week. He's only 4,300. And like, uh, like Andrew said, Greg Olson's interesting, but he's pretty expensive now. Let's move on to San Francisco at Detroit. Jeff, uh, who do you like in this game? Maybe taking both sides. Uh, do you like what Matt Stafford has done of late? And do you see anyone on the San Francisco side of the ball worth rostering in this contest? Yeah, I'm not I'm not super on anyone from San Francisco either. Um, they're going to be on the road to start, uh, which is not good. Uh, the Detroit defense... They've been, they've actually been better lately too. So there's just really no one on San Francisco that interests me. Even uh, Sean Drone has started to get his carries reduced a little bit. So he's not really that sort of value, uh, high volume target anymore. I, I do like the Detroit uh, offense at home. They've had a couple big games. Uh, the San Francisco defense has played really poorly on the road. So I think sort of a Matt Stafford, maybe a Golden Tate, maybe even Eric Ebron in this game is kind of interesting. And maybe even Amir Adula. Um, the, the San Francisco run defense isn't much better than the um, New Orleans Saints run defense. So as a sort of a GPP pick, I might think about Abdullah this week. He might have a strong finish to the year here. Let's move on to Pittsburgh at Baltimore, Andrew. And this is a game we'll, we'll focus down on a little bit more because of all the pieces we may be able to use. Uh, first and foremost, the Pittsburgh offense going up against this Baltimore defense where you have uh, Ben and Martavis and obviously Antonio Brown, even D'Angelo Williams possibly in play. Uh, who do you like uh, on both sides of the ball here? And then, Jeff, we'll, we'll get your take on this one as well. Hey, don't sleep on Heath Miller. Uh, that's really the, the thing, though, about the Steelers' offense is that everyone – is in play and they're all good plays pretty much every week and this week in particular 2019 total uh, Baltimore defense has not been good uh, even against the run they've been a little bit worse as of late so D'Angelo Williams in particular uh, is a favorite play of mine this week the volume uh, really there's no one else in the league right now that's getting the volume that he's getting he gets the looks in the red zone uh, when you know a guy is going to get 20 to 25 touches he's a lock for that there's a lot of value there uh, especially when they're big favorites so, well, I don't love that he's on the road. I'm overlooking all that because everything else lines up really well for him. Uh, and then Antonio Brown, I mean, the guy's ridiculous. Uh, I think he's the top expensive wide receiver to look at this week. I think his ownership is going to be very high. I'd be a little careful with these guys in tournaments just because so how heavily owned they're going to be. But, man, they're all really good plays. So uh, I also have a tough time fading them. It's, it's a tough decision this week with how to handle them. Jeff, how about from your perspective, are, are you all in on Pittsburgh? And do you see anybody from the Baltimore side who is worth rostering at a cheaper price tag? Yeah, I mean, this is definitely the matchup most people are going to be keying on. Um, it's not that I'm not all in on Pittsburgh because I think for cash games, you want some exposure. Uh, it's just really a matter of choosing. And I think like Andrew said, there's a really good chance D'Angelo Williams could bounce back here with a big game. Uh, they're going to be up. And I know Pittsburgh likes to throw a lot, but once they get up two or three scores, they're going to be giving D'Angelo Williams more carries. Um, I think that he's probably going to be the lesser owned of Antonio Brown and even Martavis Bryant. So if you're thinking about those big three, he might be the play, uh, especially for tournaments I'd use more of. Uh, it's not to say Antonio Brown isn't going to have a good game because he is. It's just a matter of if he's going to get 25 points or 40 points. Um but it, yeah, it's kind of tough because those guys are going to be higher owned for tournaments. So uh, I, I just really think that you need to decide, you know, do you want to go all in on it and just go all out? Or do you want to just sort of, you know, pick and choose and say, maybe I can pick this player over another. But as far as uh, Baltimore goes, you know, Buck Allen's going to be getting more of the workload. He's He's been a really good PPR play in past weeks. He had a horrible game last week, fumbled. I still think he's kind of in play in this game. I wouldn't be shocked if he bounced back here with a big PPR game because Baltimore's going to be down. Uh, they, they like to throw conservatively. They don't have a good quarterback, so uh, he could definitely bounce back. And then also Kamar Aiken getting a lot of targets. I'm not a huge fan, but they're going to be down. The Pittsburgh secondary isn't great against wide receivers. Let's keep uh, the ball rolling here towards Chicago at Tampa Bay. Andrew, uh, a matchup that uh, once again we see Alshon Jeffrey listed uh, as on the injury list, and that is pretty much if, if the season is active, we know that will be the case. Uh, but what do you see here? Do you see a, a top-flight matchup that you can exploit, or are you staying away from this game? I think on the Chicago side of the ball, I I'm mostly staying away from it. Alshon's banged up. Don't like that. Uh, I think it's not a great spot on the road. Uh, team total is not very good. The running game there, uh, you can't really figure out. I mean, they're splitting the carries, so it's just difficult to know 
if either one of them is going to have a big game, uh, they probably won't just because they're eating into each other's carries. I think Zach Miller uh, at tight end position is kind of interesting. He's been getting a lot of looks, uh, especially in the red zone as well, since Mart- Martellus Bennett went out. And I expect that to continue. Cutler always likes throwing to the tight end. Uh, and, and he's a guy that I think has been flying under the radar a little bit. And the production really has been there. So uh, I think he's a nice consideration this week. Anybody from you, Jeff, uh, other than what Andrew said or moving on to the next game? I kind of like Mike Evans in the spot too. Uh, the the Bears um, secondary isn't great. Uh, Evans definitely coming on without Vincent Jackson out. I think without Vincent Jackson out, you always have to consider Mike Evans. So he'd definitely be a play from Tampa that I'd consider. Let's uh, get on to the Dallas at Buffalo contest um, as uh, I'm probably giving our uh, producer fits here as I jump around a bit. But uh, Dallas at Buffalo uh, is the next contest up. Uh, with, uh, you know, not the best quarterback play coming from Dallas. Uh, Buffalo with a little bit of a question mark in the backfield, depending on who's going to play with the, the injury to McCoy, possible injury uh, to Carlos Williams, depending on how much he'll run he'll get. So, Jeff, where, where are you looking here? Do you trust this situation in the Buffalo backfield to find uh, a good value somewhere, or, or do you think you have to stay away? No, I wouldn't stay away. I mean, I definitely watch the situation. I think if Carlos Williams sits, it would be really good because then uh, I can't even pronounce his name, Mike Gillespie or whoever he is. We good know enough. he is. He's the, he's the backup or the third stringer. And he's run okay. He's not, he's not a, a terrible player by any means. And if he's going to be getting all the carries by himself, he becomes a great play at only 4,500. So I'd really look and hope Carlos Williams does sit because then you need a clarity and you're going to get a, a high-priced probably an ignored running back a little bit too for how much workload he's going to get in a good matchup. So uh, that he'd be definitely someone I'd target. The Dallas Cowboys play slow. Uh, they're, they're always not a great fantasy target. I just think I always try and emphasize that. So I don't like Tyrod Taylor as much this week for sure. Andrew, how about Sammy Watkins? If you don't like Taylor, do you not like Watkins? Yeah, I think for the reason that Jeff said that it's usually just a slow game when you're playing Dallas. So you're looking at playing – limited snaps, which just takes away your ability to score fantasy points. And, and that's not good. So uh, I do think it's an okay matchup as far as personnel go for Watkins and, and all that. But uh, I just worry about how many snaps they're going to play. And when you look at the fantasy points allowed by Dallas, it's, it's pretty low for, for every position. It's because, uh, because of the, the, they're just eating the clock, but Watkins, he's been so good. I, I haven't really been on him enough. Um, and, and he's been pretty popular to play too. So uh, he's the type of guy that definitely can burn you because he can catch those long touchdowns. He's done it a bunch lately. Wouldn't surprise me if he finds the end zone again. Uh, but I- I'm probably staying away from him for the most part this week. Watkins is one of those rare instances where a player called out that he wasn't getting the ball enough and then made good on it. You know, he, he made the big deal about not getting thrown the ball enough. He wasn't an integral part of the offense. And then all of a sudden, uh, the past four or five weeks, he's really turned it up. And, and Tyrod Taylor's been finding him on a pretty regular basis there. Um, it is uh, an interesting week for wide receivers. Uh, I know the uh, Odell Beckham Jr. hearings going on today, whether or not he gets to play. Um, will also be intriguing for the Sunday night game with Minnesota. We'll get to that in a little bit, not to jump around any any more as we go through this rundown. Uh, we have Indianapolis at Miami up next, uh, Jeff. And this is a contest where uh, quarterback questions obviously reign. Uh, I saw a, uh, a funny tweet uh, from somebody saying that Ryan Tannehill – uh, should find whatever the NFL equivalent to playing in China for baseball is um, and figure out how to get his game back together. But it's the CFL. It's yeah, yeah, come yeah, up I here. Yeah. And maybe <laughs> or, or some indoor league somewhere, go to the Kurt Warner route. But uh, what do you make out of this contest? I want to like T.Y. Hilton or Dante Moncrief, but I don't know if you can trust the quarterback situation there in Indianapolis. Where are you going this contest? Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of with you. I don't know if I can trust the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, it's interesting you mentioned wide receivers calling out for more work because that's pretty much what T.Y. Hillen did this week. He wants more deep routes. He thinks that they should be going deep more, which, you know, is fine. They, I just don't know if they have the personnel at quarterback, which is probably why he's not getting as many deep balls uh, right now. But it's something to think about because T.Y. Hilton can definitely give you one of those big explosion games. Uh, I wouldn't trust anyone on the Colts for cash games or anything like that. And to be honest, I'm not sure. You know, I, I guess I shouldn't say I wouldn't trust the the Dolphins' uh, pass game because I, I mean Jarvis Landry is still going to get a lot of targets, and he's in a good good matchup here. 
Uh, so Landry is probably someone I would think about for a cash game play, uh, just from a volume perspective and a PPR perspective. Uh, he's always solid. But, the, you know, the Dolphins are they're a mess too. Um, th- their run game is all over the place. They're playing J.H.I.E. now. Uh, Lamar Miller is who knows he could get 30 points or he could get three points in this game I don't know how much work they're going to give him so uh, I like Landry Uh, I maybe think about Hilton for tournaments but other than that uh, I'm kind of off this game I love uh, T.Y. Hilton being the kid on the playground who just runs the go route every time you're playing pickup (laughs) football just just throw it deep throw it up I'll go get it Um, (laughs) doesn't work as well in the NFL but we'll we'll see what happens this week especially when Andrew Luck isn't his quarterback (laughs) that Hey, uh, you know, you have a, a white hearse to hassle back. Come on. That's that's quality <laughs> quarterback play right there. Uh, we move on to a game that will have implications in my household. Uh, that is New England at the New York Jets, Andrew. And uh, I am I'm holding down for a Jets victory, but that doesn't help us from a DFS perspective. Um, this is a game that I think people will stay away from uh, because of the defenses on both sides. Uh, the rivalry aspect of it may be hard to gauge. What do you see from an offensive perspective from these two teams? Uh, We always think Tom Brady is a potential breakout candidate, but he's been pretty low-key without his major weapons out there on on a healthy basis. Yeah, I think, first of all, this game only only has a three-point spread, which is pretty interesting. Uh, That's smaller than I would have thought, but I I can see it, and uh, it should make for a great game to watch. As far as from a fantasy perspective, I could see it being a pretty low-scoring affair. I feel like that's how the Jets and the Patriots often are. But I do think there's a bump to Brady for just being in a competitive game, especially against a team that's very good against the run. I think that they'll come out there uh, and plan to throw the ball a lot. And if they can move it, uh, I think Brady could be in line for a really big game. He's also a bit of the forgotten man because he hasn't put up those big numbers lately. So it seems like his ownership in tournaments has been 10% or less. So here's an opportunity where you can get Brady at a really low cost in, in a competitive game. And, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if he threw four or five touchdowns. He's certainly capable of that. It's a little bit tough to know who to pair him with uh, if right. you're going to stack him. Uh, and I don't know. I think Edelman's still planning on being out. But Amendola, he's coming off that complete stinker last week, which I didn't think it was possible for him. So, such a bad game. I think he had .3 DraftKings points or something like that. Just terrible. Uh, Gronk has been solid. I mean, he scored a touchdown, but I don't know how many snaps he's seeing. I think uh, I'd have to look at what he did last week, but he hasn't been out there as much as I would like, and his price is high. But I think you could look at him in a tournament. Jeff, how insane would it be to play Hankerson if you hear he's going to be active for the Patriots? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. I think I'd still go with LaFell. I think LaFell was looking a little bit better last week. I, I think they're going to try and get him more involved. I, I just worry about the snaps with Hankerson. It's not a bad play, though, uh, because like Andrew said, I'm not sure where the – you're never sure where the ball's going. You don't know if Amadol is going to bounce back. One play I really do like in this game, actually, though, uh, is James White. Uh, the Patriots traditionally do not – you know, they game plan their opponent, and they're not going to just run the ball blindly into the, the Jets' front um, because that's the strength of their defense. So they're going to use more James White. I wouldn't be shocked if Brady threw 50 times either. I kind of like this game a little bit as a sneaky tournament play. I hope it is under-owned. And I don't even mind some of the Jets. I really think Bilal Powell's in a good spot. I don't think that uh, Chris Ivory's going to have a big game. The Patriots' run D is pretty good too. Uh, Brandon Marshall, I-, I feel like, is able to get open against anyone. So I think he's still an okay play in this game. But, uh, you know, the Jets have been able to move the ball with the pass too. So I think Bilal Powell's in play, and I think Brandon Marshall's in play. I like both sides of this game. And we know that Eric Decker just catches touchdowns and, and touchdowns are, are points on draft games. Yeah, so we'll he, just see. Gets, he just gets 18 to 22 points every week. So that's not bad either. Uh, we move on, Jeff, to Houston at Tennessee. Um, this is another game where quarterback play is going to be a major question mark with injuries. Um, I think Houston's on what their 15th quarterback of the year, obviously a little bit of hyperbole there, but uh, it sure does feel like it for the Texans and Tennessee uh, with Mariota out. Uh, is this one to, to sort of say hi to while watching on red zone and, and keep moving on? Yeah, this is the not game of the week. This is just you know, Tennessee's uh, secondary hasn't been good. So I, I guess you always have to think about DeAndre Hopkins, but I really don't like the way things have been going for him uh, just because the Houston's been playing more conservative lately. Uh, they've been sitting on teams with their defense. They're playing a little bit slower. Uh, I, I would, yeah, I mean, I really, I just stay away from this game. You don't even know who the quarterback's going to be yet. There's really no value anywhere else for me. Tennessee, I, I love Delaney Walker. 
again, this game could just be a little bit ugly. He'll probably still get like six catches, 80 yards, and maybe find a touchdown, but it's just not the greatest game. Uh, I, I'm just going to pretty much avoid this one. Andrew, let's move on to, to our next game here on this slate, which is Cleveland at Kansas City. Uh, feels like a good week to pay up for defense with the Kansas City defense playing so well week over week and Cleveland uh, being turnover prone and, and question marks on their offense. Uh, who do you like here? Uh, do you even go to the other side of the ball and target somebody like uh, Jeremy Macklin or even wait for, for the final coming of, of Travis Kelsey this year? Yeah, so Macklin has been really good lately. My concern with him is just that it's not a high-volume offense. They've thrown the ball, I think, 22, 23, 25 times in the last three weeks, which is just not a lot, even with Macklin getting around 40% of the targets. Uh, it, you know, it, it's solid, but his price has come up some. I just wish that I knew they would be throwing the ball more, and I think this will be another week where there's a lot of running. That being said, I still think Macklin's a pretty decent play. Uh, Alex Smith, I think, is one of the top – cash game quarterback plays. I don't know how much upside he has, but he's awfully safe. He's been really solid. He, he's gone a little under the radar as far as how solid he's been as a fantasy quarterback this year. And it's just a great spot for him at home, 2017 total against a bad Cleveland defense. So uh, I, I might spend that extra 100 bucks for Fitzpatrick because I think there's some more upside there. But Alex Smith is a very viable quarterback play this week. Jeff, uh, Kansas City running backs, we had a West with the, the bulk of the carries. Ware was active but didn't get in the contest. West's price tag jumps up to 5700 uh, in this game. Do you still like, uh, as Andrew's describing it, being a low pass volume, a high run volume for, for West here and a, a good play at 5700 uh, not at 5700 just because uh, Spencer Ware is probably going to play more this week. Now, that being said, if injury news comes out and he's limited again, yeah, I probably would consider Chuck Andrew West because uh, there's a good chance he, he could have a multi-touchdown game. But if, if they're both involved, no, that's just too expensive for me. I hate uh, when carries get split and then you're guessing and where is really more of the goal line back too. So you're probably going to get a touchdown vultured. Uh, for me, he's just too expensive uh, if they're both active. Keep the wheels turning here, Jeff, to Jacksonville at New Orleans. It does feel like a Blake Bortles week uh, where you have Bortles and Hearns and Robinson and and that entire offense, question marks in the backfield there. But going up against New Orleans, we saw Stafford do it. We've seen everybody do it this year, and, and eventually you have to just trust the situation is a good one. Uh, what do you like from this contest? Who are you focusing in on from a wide receiver perspective and even on the New Orleans side of the ball with the Breeze question mark? Do you like anybody from New Orleans? Yeah, I mean, this is another one of those games where you like everyone, I think, from Jacksonville to some degree. So uh, I think Blake Bortles does make for a pretty safe play this week. And I'm not a big Blake Bortles fan. So, uh, it, you know, for me to say that, it, it, he really is probably a safe play this week. Um, I really like Julius Thomas in this matchup. I like targeting tight ends, especially against New Orleans. Uh, it, you know, we're, we'll, it's tough to say whoever Brandon Browner is covering is probably going to be a good target too. So you're going to have to catch that. But uh, I really like Julius Thomas. Uh, he's been getting – he led them in uh, receiving uh, catches and yards last week. So he's getting a lot of looks from Blake Bortles. In the red zone, he's getting a lot of looks too. I think there's definitely potential. He catches at least one touchdown in this game. Uh, I really like him as the main target for me from uh, that Jacksonville passing attack. And Andrew, from a, a New Orleans perspective, we have Breeze questionable. Uh, we'll see what comes of that next. But uh, would you roster a Cooks or, or a Ben Watson uh, if uh, Breeze is healthy? Yeah, well, I think even if he does play, he's not going to be healthy. Uh, he's got a he tore or something in his foot. So he wants to finish out the year. But it might be something that, that hurts his efficiency. So I think there's a concern there either way, certainly if if Breeze is not playing, I, I don't think I'm really looking at any of these guys. But if he does go, uh, you could give Cooks a look. He's been very good lately, uh, more of what we thought he would be coming into the year uh, after a really slow start. And I think his price is still pretty solid down at 5.9K. Um, the, the guy, too, who is just no one really ever talks about, but just week in and week out, uh, he, he's had solid production, is Ben Watson. I think, you know, when you, when you consider he's $200, more than Julius Thomas, who, for the reasons that Jeff said, I, I really like Julius Thomas a lot this week. I'm probably looking at him. But but Watson could be a really interesting tournament pivot uh, because uh, he, he just kind of never gets the, the respect that he deserves here. 
Andrew, sticking with you for our next game, Green Bay at Arizona. Uh, you pointed out before we started recording that uh, David Johnson's price tag has caught up to him. And in this offense, uh, he is such a weapon, uh, being a former wide receiver and being so talented. You saw what many dubbed as the beast mode run last week where he broke, I think, six tackles uh, along the way to a touchdown uh, down the sideline. This matchup seems like another one where Johnson is the most viable to pair with Palmer. Uh, who do you like here, and do you like anybody on the, the Green Bay side of the ball? Yeah, I mean, it's a little unfortunate because it was the night game that they played, so I think the salaries had already been posted, but uh, he, he was already underpriced last week regardless of what he did. And, of course, he put up almost 50 fantasy points, and his price only went up $100. So he's kind of the free square pick of the week, I think. Uh, you'd be kind of crazy to not have him on your team with the way that he's played. I think he's an awesome fit for that offense. They're running the ball more, and, and he's been just really effective. So I'll be locking him in for sure. You can maybe consider fading him in some tournaments just because he's going to be so heavily owned. But uh, I don't know. It's, it, it's a good spot for him. Uh, but, you know, the problem is when he's having a really big game like that, it, it's going to take away from the right. receivers from Carson Palmer. I, I really liked Palmer last week. And I think he was a little unlucky because John Brown dropped two balls that could have been touchdowns, and that might have shifted the landscape a bit. But, you know, it is what it is, and, and you have to be worried about David Johnson from here on out if you're owning the pass catchers or Carson Palmer. So I do think there are some good plays in there, but trying to figure – you know, they're just all still a little underpriced. Michael Floyd at 4.9 uh, in particular. But th th there is some risk there, so keep that in mind. Jeff, on the other side of the ball, there's no reason to test this – Arizona defense with anybody from the Packers, is there? Eh, I, you know, I really liked Randall Cobb last week, and I, I don't know, maybe I just like am a moth to a flame with him, but I just keep thinking at some point he's going to have that big game. And uh, he's not going to see Patrick Peterson much in this game because he does play from the slot. So, you know, this game has a big point total. I think you're probably going to see Green Bay behind at some point, and Aaron Rodgers is still the quarterback. So uh, I really like the point total in this game. It's almost 50. I think that maybe a sneaky play there is to target uh, like a Randall Cobb and an Aaron Rodgers, especially for tournaments. I do like this game a lot. I think, uh, I think it might be a little bit less owned too, just because of what Andrew said about Carson Palmer being a bit of a dud last week. I think maybe a Carson Palmer, Larry Fitzgerald stack is really sneaky too. So I, I definitely like this game for fantasy. It's always fun discussing uh, fantasy with my five-year-old. She goes to a, a school called Fitzgerald Elementary. So Larry Fitzgerald is always a top play in her mind. So. <laughs> It works out sometimes, um, but nonetheless, we move she on. She had a good to start to the year, right? Yes, she did, both in school and uh, in fantasy. <laughs> uh, we can uh, move on to the next contest, uh, which is St. Louis at Seattle, Jeff. Russell Wilson, Doug Baldwin, defying logic at this point. Um, we're all waiting for the regression to set in there, but Doug Baldwin keeps catching touchdowns. Russell Wilson keeps throwing them uh, and has been very efficient and very good at keeping the ball away from the opposing team. St. Louis has been a good defense on the year, not nothing electric, but very solid in the secondary, very solid across the board for the most part. Um, do you like anybody from Seattle this week, or is this another game that maybe we can enjoy watching from an NFL perspective and stay away from from a daily fantasy one? Yeah, I, I think that if Russell Wilson wasn't playing at such a high level, you could probably just say, I skipped this game. But I, I do think you could give some consideration to him and to um, some of the, the Seahawk pass catchers. I really like Tyler Lockett. Yep. He's really been coming on lately. Uh, I think that eventually teams have to start shifting coverage over to Doug Baldwin because, I mean, how many touchdowns can you let him score before you start doubling him or something near the red zone? So I think that will benefit Lockett too. I think you could see a big game from him maybe even this week, uh, maybe week 17. But um yeah, I think that Tyler Lockett's an interesting tournament play. He's still cheap too, so uh, that might be someone I'd consider. Otherwise, I'm definitely not considering anyone from uh, St. Louis in this game, but uh, I think Wilson still makes for a good tournament play, especially if his ownership's a little bit lower this week, which it should be. Andrew, we can move on to the game we previewed slightly before uh, in talking about the Odell Beckham Jr. hearing and, and whether or not uh, his suspension will be rescinded. Uh, we'll wait to hear on that. As of right now, he will not be playing. Uh, with him out, does that open up the major value for uh, Giants' other pass catchers, Ruben Randall, uh, maybe even some uh, Hakeem Nicks, if you're really feeling saucy this week? I guess more uh, Dwayne Harris would be a, a target there. But does it open up more if Beckham Jr. is out, or does it just 
kill the Giants offense for all intents and purposes. I'm more of the mind that it kills the offense. I think that offense really goes as Odell goes. And, and when he's playing well, they're able to move the ball. It opens up some uh, easier catches for the other pass catchers. And, and when he's not playing well or not playing at all, uh, the, the offense really isn't very good. And the numbers would indicate that they have a 20 team total. Uh, they're on the road. Uh, Minnesota defense is legit. It seems like a really bad spot. Now, that being said, Ruben Randall's only 3,500. I think he'll probably get the biggest bump in targets. I think you could play him at that price. I mean, it's just a pure price play. You're not liking anything else about it except for volume and price. Uh, and that should be there. But again, I just worry about their ability to move the ball. So I, he'd probably be the only guy that I, I would consider. Hakeem Nix, no way. Um, Dwayne Harris, you know, it's just I, I don't think you need to go there especially when Randall's 3.5, that, that would be the guy I would consider. Jeff, moving on to the other side of the ball. One, do we trust the ter- uh, Teddy Bridgewater we saw last week, or do we trust the one who was scoring single-digit DraftKings points, or is the, the truth somewhere in between? And uh, the question about Kyle Rudolph. Is this a, a week to target Rudolph because the Giants have been so deplorable against tight ends this year? Yeah, I mean, normally I'd just say don't trust Teddy Bridgewater because this is a conservative offense, but they're playing the Giants who give up a ton of points to everyone they play. So maybe this is uh, a week to stay on Teddy Bridgewater in the passing game here. Um, I definitely like Rudolph. He's been trending, so I'm glad you brought him up. Uh, I think he's a sneaky play at tight end for sure. He is only, uh, yeah, he's still only 3,300. So um, it's not like we're talking about an expensive play here too. I also like Stefan Diggs uh, in this matchup, you know, the Giants seemingly have some solid corners, but they just keep giving up tons of points and passing yards every week. So I think Stefan Diggs and Kyle Rudolph are both good value targets. And I think Teddy Bridgewater, you at least have to consider again. Um, I know it's a conservative offense, but I think he's a really good young quarterback. He just doesn't produce for fantasy because of the style of offense they're in. So uh, it's an interesting game and it's an interesting uh, offense to target this week for sure. Let's round out the full preview here with Cincinnati and Denver. And with the question marks around the quarterback play here, this feels like a game that, hey, let's sit down and watch Monday Night Football and enjoy it. But we're not going to see a whole lot of ownership here. Uh, Jeff, do you see you know, going after Demarius or A.J. Green here for low ownership and high upside? Or, or do you think this is just because the quarterbacks are, are moving pieces right now that it's easier to, to let this one fade? Yeah, I, I won't have much of this game at all. Um, I, I don't like the spot for, for the bon- the Broncos uh, much. The Bengals' defense is very solid, and uh, they don't let, allow many points per game. Uh, I know everyone saw Brock Eisweiler have that awesome first half last week, but you know uh, they, they really sucked in the second half, and uh, I, the, the Bengals' secondary is better than the Pittsburgh secondary, and it's just a better defense. Uh, and then on the, the, the flip side, you, you know, you're still have an elite – uh, Broncos defense that AJ Green is going to have to deal with without Tyler Eifert and with AJ McCarron at quarterback. Yeah, I wish I could come up with a great play for this game, but I really don't have one. <laughs> uh, you do have the Denver Broncos defense, which gave up a lot of points last week, but still did pick up interceptions and three sacks, which which does balance out when uh, defense is giving up points. They they get those peripherals. It's kind of like in the NBA where you have a point guard who's going to pick up the steals and the assists and the rebounds. It, it helps out when they're not scoring. Same with this Denver defense. They get after the ball. Uh, Andrew, I'm, I'm going to put it to you here. Tyler Croft, play, play of the week, right? I mean, that's <laughs> the, the play of the week right there for, for Mr. Croft, Rutgers alum. Let's see how that worked out so well. Uh, Croft catching his first career touchdown last week, filling in for Tyler Eifert, but agree that this is a game to, to let slide and let uh, enjoy Monday Night Football. It will be tough if you're sweating out a big tournament to have to watch uh, this game unfold with the likes of Demarius and AJ Green possibly owned, uh, but uh, will be uh, one to watch and not own for sure. I agree with Jeff there. Gentlemen, great job as always here on the full preview. Uh, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Uh, enjoy the time. Uh, this preview gets out to you guys early here so you can enjoy the time as well and enjoy your NFL weekend. You can find all sorts of goodies on DraftKings TV and also over there on the DK Playbook as well. So for Jeff and Andrew, this is Dan saying happy holidays and we'll see you next time right here on the DraftKings TV Week 16 preview show.